This is Christy K from He Was a God and Jenna Torturers, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. So let's talk about He Was a God. Um, debut album, Smile in the Sky, yeah. is, out, is out now. Um, how do you feel about it, and are you satisfied with the outcome? Yeah, it's, um, so we just released the, the first EP, Smile and the Scar, in December. Um, we're very happy with the outcome, and you know we feel that um, the production really captured what we're going for and portrays what we are as a band. Um, so yeah, we've been playing live a lot on that and uh, looking to get back into the studio later this year to record another EP. Are you ready? Do you have stuff written already? Yeah. Um, you know, we had enough for a full length, but we decided, uh, you know, the way that we're going about it, we're going to break it up into a couple EPs first. Um, and then maybe next year do a full length. So the music business, and I'm sure you're well, well aware of it as well, has kind of had to reinvent itself. And a lot of people are doing the singles or the EP versions, but you guys are like a, an amalgamation of some really m- much bigger bands. How did that sit with you? Because it's a different process now, right? Oh, yeah, very much so. Um, yeah, so I play in a couple other big, bigger bands, touring bands, uh, Jenna Torturers and Dead Star Assembly. Um, even, you know, from releasing full albums a few years ago, it's just a different world right now. And, you know, everyone's still kind of navigating it and figuring out what the best way to go about things is. Um, with He Was a God, you know, being a band that's still kind of in our infancy, we thought that it would be best to go this route and kind of break it up what we have is for music into smaller chunks and release it as EPs rather than a full length right off the bat. I think that's, I mean, kids and I have kids that are in their teens or late teens and that's how they're consuming everything, right? Everything is just small little chunks and I know old, yeah. school, old school me, I wanted the whole record and I want to sit down and read it and look at the, that's all I'm gone. Right there with you. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, it feels great to have like a tangible piece of music with a whole booklet or sleeve that you can read through. And right. you know, that's how it was for me growing up. And I, I love that. And I definitely miss that that's being kind of phased out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, hopefully, you know, everything becomes retro again or everything becomes new again. So hopefully it, uh, mm-hmm. it all comes back because I think everyone's missing that whole. It was a whole process, right? And a camaraderie. Oh, you, yeah. know, you go to the record store on a Tuesday and you chat with all the buddies that are there to buy the same record that you've waited and saved your paper out money for to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. I definitely miss that. Yeah. Hey, so the record, I mean, the first thing you notice when you listen to it, songs or whatever, it's super, super emotional and, and deep. Is there a message or something you want your fans to take away from after listening to uh, Smile in the Scar? Um, I wouldn't say that there's a single message that, really encompasses the you know the ep as a whole um but uh the way that our vocalist ben writes it's it comes from a very personal place and you know these of all the songs are based off of kind of personal tragedy but if you really get into the lyrics there's kind of a hopeful message and a positive spin that's put on it um especially the the third song on the ep two new stars that's based off of um, an event that happened when Ben was back in college. He had a friend that had a sister that was abducted and murdered. Shit. And yeah, you know, it really was a shock and took a toll on his friend and their whole group of friends. But throughout the years, he kind of, you know, did the best he could to put a positive spin on it and always felt like he had his sister up there watching out for him and, you know, kind of make the best of a tragedy like that when you guys are putting out music like that i mean you know that deep and that emotional and powerful do you find that i mean obviously it connects with people but do you have stories of or good stories of people that have said hey this i don't know saved my life or this i was in a bad place and i listened to this song and it changed me um can't honestly say that we've heard much of that so far. Um, we've definitely gotten a good response to the music. And I, I think, you know, as some people sit with it more, that message will sink in. Um, so I'd like to think that it will or has affected people. Um, and, you know, we're, we're hoping that more people will start to listen and really see that in the music as well. When you guys are writing, um, 
you come from very theatrical bands. Are you guys writing with a with a stage setting in mind, or are you writing like a song for the song's sake and then worrying about what happens? <laughs> with this band, for me especially, um, it's coming more from a, a musical place rather than thinking about the stage. So first and foremost, um, you know, when I play with Jenna Tortures, the music. I, I love playing the music and you know it's a band that's been around for so long but i it's think it's a whole package theater and all yeah the, the stage show kind of overshadows what we do musically uh with he was a god i would say the music is definitely in the forefront um that's what we're thinking of when we're writing but you know the the shows have been very theatrical and very intense and i don't think people are going to be disappointed live at all Awesome. I know you said you've been playing live shows, so you've been able to play through a lot of this nonsense. Yeah. Um, you know, we did have to take a big chunk of time off, um, but uh, I'd say we started playing again two or three months ago and had a handful of some great shows and we have uh, more lined up throughout the year. What's it like being back on the road after that long ass break? Is it, was it difficult to get your road legs again or your sea legs again, or you just jumped right in? Not really. Um, you know, I kind of jump right back in. Um, it's something that just comes second, second nature to me at this point. Um, but it feels damn good to be playing. Yeah, I imagine. And I, you know, I've only been to one or two shows since this whole thing, but I know the energy, even from the audience side is amazing. I mean, it's gotta be great for you because the, the exchange has got to be so much more amped up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people were really eager to get back out there and see music again. And there was you know, such a long pause on all that, that, you know, people really are hungry to get out and see shows. So that that's been great. And I think in this community, the metal community, it's unlike anywhere else. The, uh, the shows are like where you meet your best friends and it, it's a family really, no matter where yeah. you are. So you took that away for a year and a half and you know, we're all struggling. Yeah. That's really been tough, especially with all like the political upheaval and something, you know, music should be something that you can put all that other bullshit in the life aside and you know it just brings everyone together and doesn't matter what your views are on this or that you can go see a show and share that energy with someone else and you know nothing else really matters in that moment right you could be in the pit together knocking each other over and then go vote for whoever the hell you want to vote with it doesn't matter yeah yeah exactly that's great what do you guys have? Uh, so you said you got shows coming up. Are you, you doing the next EP? Or are you releasing another single shortly? Or how's that working out? Uh, so right now, nothing's set in stone right now. Uh, but we, we do have shows booked up through June. And then we're going to start thinking about recording the next uh, EP. Probably another three or four songs in like June, July. So that's, that's the plan right now. Sweet. So you're able to probably write on the road as well, right? Yeah. Um, you know, with this chunk of music, we had it written before we had a vocalist. Um, ben joined us only um, about a year, less than a year ago now, but we had uh, all this music written and the chemistry with him was great. Um, and you know, he took what we had written and put lyrics to it. And, you know, it definitely needed some restructuring in the songs so it was it was good to have that time away um and then come back to it with another vocal or with a vocalist and someone that could put in some different input right so like a, a you know different perspective yeah yeah for sure excellent and then so the last one i had and we'll go back to touring for a second and i'm just curious do you are, are you doing anything different or out of the ordinary to adapt to the climate we're in or you just kind of back out there like you were pre nonsense yeah i mean trying our best to be out there as, as regularly as we can um yeah, it's it's been pretty normal for me oh that's you good know, it, was, it was unfortunate to take all that time off and not play um but now that things are starting to come back it, it feels good and starting to feel normal hopefully that continues yeah. So sweet. I come to the end of my questions. Did I miss anything you want to cover? I don't think so. Um, you know, it's, I would love for people to check out the smile on the scar. Uh, he was a God can it's all over social media. Um, and the, the record is available through all digital and streaming services. So we really want people to check it out and come to the uh, show. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Buy, buy a shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Anything helps. Anything helps. Thank you, my friend. I hope that wasn't too bad. 
No, perfect. Hey, be it's well, stay safe, and I'm hoping I don't. I haven't looked at the routing yet. Are you guys coming anywhere near Virginia? Not yet. Um, mostly have regional dates throughout the Northeast for over the next few months, but mm-hmm. hopefully sometime this year we'll start making our way south again. Cool. Hopefully see you down here somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Be well, be safe, and thanks again, man. All right, man. All right, cheers. Thank you very much. Appreciate right. it. Take care. Hello out there. Yes, we're out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimbut the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!